In Leathercraft, there is a lot of steps between pattern and finished product. I'm Joe from 23 Plus, and in this video, I'm gonna help you tackle one of the most intimidating steps, and that's figuring out which side of the line to bevel on. When you're just getting started tooling, and you look at all those lines, that can be super scary. But I'm gonna show you a few fundamentals that's gonna help you along the way and really simplify that big mess of lines. Let's head over and check it out. I'm gonna to try to break this down and make it as simple as we can to figure out which way each of the lines go. Anytime that I have a hard cut border like this where there's nothing going over top of the border, the border sits on top, everything else is tucking underneath, I'm gonna go by first, uh, I'm gonna get my big wide bevel out here and we're gonna run along and bevel that border in. Now let's look and start breaking down what is inside this pattern that we're gonna be looking at. So first off, we can see the big space fillers. We have six flowers in here, and then tucked back in here, there's one leaf. So the what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna size down, I'm gonna to go to, um, to my number two bevel here, but let's, look at each flower individually and start by going around them. First off, if you can see the flower as a whole, pick one of the lines and we can start by going around that. And the when we see one of these space fillers, we want those on top, so we're gonna be beveling out away from us. And when we're gonna be going outside of something, always keep the, the flat side of your bevel to you. We're beveling that line out until it runs into something, okay? Now it intersects this line, so I stop, but I started in the middle of that line so I can keep going the other way. Once you start on a line in one direction, you continue beveling that direction throughout the line. Continue all the way. through. Now that line carried us down into the middle of that flower so it naturally started layering these petals for us knowing which side of the line to go on. Let's go back to the outside of the flower again. And we can run this line till it intersects. And run it around this way until it intersects. See, we ran into another line, so we have to stop. This one here, we can run both directions. That one intersected there. Now it's time to come back to the outside here. Sex, switch over to the other one. Mm. 
<clears throat> okay, now this pedal here, you'll notice it didn't intersect on either side. So that means that one is sitting on top of both of these ones. So we're gonna call that the dominant pedal. And you'll notice every single one of these flowers has one of those dominant petals. And that's gonna come into play in a little bit here when we start talking about the dominant stem coming out of that. But for now, let's go through and get all the flowers beveled out. Hey there, I hope you're enjoying this and getting a ton of value out of it. We still got a lot left to go, but I just wanted to jump on here real quick and say, if you enjoy this step-by-step -step instruction style and you wanna dive deeper into Leathercraft and into your tooling and construction, I really encourage you to check out the link in the description below for the Leather Life Classroom. That's a subscription-based online class that I do and this Bible cover, for example, is just one project in there. We do one project every month. It gets uploaded at the beginning of the month and there is videos all the way through step by step, not just the tooling, but you get the tooling patterns, the construction patterns, if those are uh, associated with the particular project. And then I walk you through step by step the entire project, cutting out, measuring, constructing, tooling, finish work, all of that so again if you're enjoying this step-by-step -step stuff and you want to get more of it i really encourage you to check out that link below but we still have more beveling to do because it doesn't look like this yet so let's jump back over and keep beveling Now that our flowers are beveled, let's look at our one other space filler we talked about, this leaf that was tucked back in behind here. So we know that it's behind, so, but we can see it for what it is. These outside lines need to bevel out, but they're gonna stop when they run into something. See how it's tucked back in behind both of these circles of vine work. on this side and that comes back down into the stem now that stem will bevel out both directions to have that stem stand up Until that intersects, turn that around and do the same thing on the other side of it. Okay, now that takes care of all of our big space fillers in this pattern. Now it's time to work through our vine work and start getting that figured out. Earlier we talked about the dominant petal on each of these flowers, that petal that stands over top. Every one of the dominant petals has a stem coming out of it, right? So that vine works growing around and that flower is growing up out of that. That dominant stem is gonna be the stem of the vine work that stands on top, meaning we're gonna be beveling out both directions from it. So we're gonna go around now find the dominant stem from each petal or from each flower see and that goes it's running under our border 
picks back up here. And then that line fades out. Now on the inside of it, the dominant pedal and most of the patterns that I draw are going to be marked by this little little half line that comes in there uh, and that comes in into play later on when we start putting our details in but it's easy to spot through and see that little partial line in all these dominant stems okay the inside same thing we're going to bevel out away from that stem Anytime in a pattern like this, you can see where a line comes and then intersects, like with this flower petal, that means that petal is over top, right? So this stem is running underneath there. Keep looking to see if that line picks up on the other side. It fades in here. That one just fades fades off into that pedal and doesn't pick back up over there, right? All right, let's move over. We'll check this flower here. We're going to go around for that dominant stem. Runs underneath that border. You can see it picks up right here. See, sometimes where lines intersect like that, will go back, back and forth and kind of fade those and make sure that we're looking natural and not too many big smushed over tool marks at all. So let's catch the inside of this one. And we run under this pedal here. Does it pick back up? Right there. Same thing, we come under this one. Oh, and it picks up right here. This one actually continues to pick up. We can keep following right around. That one carried us quite a ways there. Let's move down to the next flower and we can do the same thing. So we're just gonna keep walking our way through on all these flowers, just finding that dominant stem, beveling out both ways, continuing those lines as they pick up underneath something. Alright, after we have that dominant stem beveled all the way through, now we can start working our way out from that. Now, once you follow down a stem, you can see that lines are moving out from there. So if this one's stacked on top, then we can move out and catch that next one out. Run that both ways. that's what's gonna layer those 
vines as they head out from there. Now this line here was already picked up because we had followed the inside all the way around back to there because this is our one continuous circle of vine work in this pattern. But if we keep rotating here, we look, there's another vine work that's meeting in here together. So as those come in, they're becoming one here. But we move out from that dominant stem. I can move out to this outside. Well, that fades out. Moving out from there. Moving out from there, this next big long line. Now moving out from here, and we want to pay attention too, if I came too far down here and then tried moving out into this line, well that line's coming from another direction, right? So this line here is actually where we're moving out to because these are coming and overlapping, these two circles of vine work here. So we follow some of these general rules, but you have to sometimes stop and, and pay attention on what these lines are doing. So they're general rules, remember. I'm gonna come out here, catch the outside of that one. And we're intersecting here and this line is curved a different way from these ones are all curved this way. It's kind of telling us it's that same flow of vine work. And we run into something that's going a different way that kind of tells you to pick up and look because something's, something different's happening here. Okay, but once we've worked our way out, we can kind of come back up and look at these vines. That vine there, there's an outside line to it right here, right? kind of the top of that little sticker vine so I can come back and finish that off. Just close that vine in. So vine, vine, we're kind of creating a background space right here. Come back up the next vine. It has a small line that can get beveled out. Again, standing that vine up, pushing background back down away from it. Move up that next vine. That can get finished out. So we're gonna keep going through that all the way through this pattern. Again, just looking, looking at where we're at, moving in. So this dominant stem here, comes down you see it kind of would fade off somewhere behind this uh, behind this pedal here this is our next one in so we're going in that's going to come up this vine is coming in here and we can close it off Now, every, all these lines are beveling in towards this space here, telling me that's a background space. So the other thing that you can do when you have your original pattern, if the backgrounds are marked on that, then as you're transferring your pattern, you can put a little dot in the middle of all your background spaces. That's gonna help you as well, just kind of see some of that stuff. Okay, this vine works coming around. We can keep working through the inside of that. Okay, 
and then our same thing going out from your vine work. So this dominant stem worked its way the inside. That was that first one that we did. Came all the way back. Now we can move out from there. It comes up, closes off. Tucking under our border, comes back out here. And they fade off here together. So you have this circle of vine work and this circle of vine work fading together. That tells me this is kind of a space filler here that's coming in behind both those vines. So I can come out to that line. thing on the outside of it there. This just looks like kind of a big old stump there but when we go to run our shading and decorative cuts we'll make that look really cool. Okay I'm starting to get just a little bit dry on my leather here. Um, I can I can hear it I can see it kind of feel it as my tools are going so I'm just gonna Get my water and wet this back down one more time. See it kind of sucking in there, so I'm just gonna put one more wet down here. Okay, we'll let that sit in there and then get ready to keep beveling. So I'm going to continue working through this pattern again just looking for that dominant stem coming out and then building out from that take that up till it intersects something and then I can come up that vine and close that off by beveling out so we're going to keep working our way all the way through our vine work looking for where that dominant stem is beveling out both directions to the inside, to the outside, and then closing those vines off.
Okay, so by following those kind of simple rules, but starting with that dominant stem, working your way back from each of those flowers and working out from that dominant stem, we can pretty well follow all the way through an entire pattern like that. Again, if when you transfer your pattern, if you mark your background spaces, that can also help you when you're looking at that. But I wanted to show you without those marked, how we could follow along there and fill in that whole pattern knowing which side of the line to bevel on. Hey guys, again, I hope you got a ton of value out of this. If you want more content just like this, I really encourage you to check out that link below for the Leather Life Classroom if you wanna dive into full projects and get that step-by-step -step all the way through. And be sure to like, subscribe right here so you don't miss future videos just like this. We'll see you on the next one.